Welcome to our January 2017 Power Session. This is our first Power Session for the year and we have an amazing businesswoman with us today. Richendra Van Mullen, who is the founder of Integrity, an award-winning strategy agency focused on digital marketing, is going to share with us her stories of being an amazing businesswoman and being a mum. So welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What a lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to have you on um, on the show today and you know I know that if I could have three hours with you I would because there's just you know from all your blogs and your media that I, you know the media um, information I've been reading you just got this wealth of knowledge that I just I would just need to share it with our community um, but we're not gonna do three hours so don't worry <laughs> Um, so yeah, so just as an introduction, if you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you're a mum of one. I'm a mum of one, baby yeah. Ashna, yeah. that's right. Fantastic. Yep. I'm the um, founder and managing director of Integrity Agency, so we're a digital strategy agency based out of Melbourne. Uh, we're about five years old, so I always say Integrity is my first baby, and then <laughs> baby, but obviously Ashton is much more special. Um, and before that, I was actually working at World Vision um, in Australia and in the US. So I was working in yeah large not for profit organisations um, in social media. So mm -hmm. that was kind of a, a it's been a very big jump for me the last five years going from a social worker to a a marketer in not-for-profits to a business owner of a rapidly growing business. So yeah. that's writing, fantastic. So I mean, that leads on to the yeah. <laughs> that leads on to like the very first question is, how do you know to take that plunge? Because you know we have a lot of corporate working moms at the moment that are trying to set up their own business whilst they're working. How did you know you were ready to? Just go, hey, I'm sitting at my own agency. Who's coming with me? <laughs> That's a really good question. I get asked that a lot in the female founders networks mm. that I'm in. And, you know, I think it's quite similar to the question of like, how do I know what my calling is? Mm. A lot of people would say this is their calling. And I once saw a great speaker called Rob Bell talk about how that's the wrong question because often, you know, that taking that next step isn't like, you hear some clear voice in the sky saying you need to do this and you need to do it at this state. But it's more so that something enrages you so much that you have to do something about it or something excites you so much that you can't not do it. And that's what integrity really was for me was, you know, I saw how digital agencies operated in Australia and I saw a real lack of integrity um, and also um, things that were really uh, I guess I saw a lot of um, knowledge being misused or a lack of transparency, uh, huge skill gaps. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, it started with an idea of, you know, maybe one day I could start an agency and then I would like our friends and I would joke about how we were all going to start this agency because we all worked in digital <laughs> together. And then this idea just got carried away with itself. And I was on my honeymoon with my husband. We had, yeah, obviously just gotten married five years ago. and. Um, I, when I got back to work and I had a great job, I was the social media manager of world vision and had a great team and great resources, but I just got so obsessed with this idea that it, <laughs> it was just, a, it was hounding me. So um, I did the conservative thing and said, you know, I'm going to quit my job, but I'm going to quit it in three months and I'm going to go down to two days a week. So I didn't want to leave my company in the lurch, but I also wanted to give myself enough time to get something started. Um, and as soon as I announced it to my company, I got a phone call from World Vision International saying, I hear you going out on your own will be your biggest client. Wow. Uh, started off and have remained, I guess, profitable from the get-go. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's a, a, a word of encouragement is if you are... are a natural networker or um, naturally successful in your corporate career, it is likely once you announce that you want to do your own thing, people want to support you and champion you. And you know, you we've all had those awkward farewells where someone's going to a competitor or to another <laughs> kind of you know weird, and you don't really talk about it. I felt the opposite when it was starting my own business. I've heard the same thing from others that most people are say, "I I would love to do that, but I'm scared." And how can I help you? Like people are so 
willing to go out of their way to help you because they realize it's not normal Mm -hmm. and it's hard. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it's finding that breaking point of when you can't not do it anymore and then creating a bit of a sustainable path for you to start doing it, which also can become your first marketing channel. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you guys are doing really well. So congratulations, five years down the line. Amazing. So how did you find, I mean, did you find things changed when your little one came along? Because you now, you know, you focused on your first baby, as you've mentioned, mentioned, and now this amazing little beings arrived. How did things change for you? Oh, um... I think it's like everything's changed, but nothing's changed at the same time in a way, you know, like I'm still, I've still got the same goals. You know, I want to build the, um, the most visible digital agency in Australia by 2020. And I still have, you know, goals for the way we do our work and the kind of people we have, but how I manage myself and my time is what's changed. So I would say that being a mum has made me a much more efficient Mm -hmm professional like before her I could work any hours and every hour not that I I did I was always quite disciplined but you know there was always the option to push yourself a little bit more and I feel like Ashton has really given she's given me that hard deadline at the end of the day <laughs> that um you know I, I have to go home at a certain time to be with her and that also means I'm more mindful in that moment of that's my time with her and I want to close loops before I see her mm-hmm. so I would say I'm you know, much more um, vigilant about how I'll use my time as well. Like I know coffees to pick my brain ever again. And, um, you know, if someone has a request from me, I'll be very specific about that deadline and also how that links to our company's strategic goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. Whereas I would probably be a lot more open and generous with time before. And sometimes that means not using my time well. And I think that I see a lot of young entrepreneurs struggle with that is uh, they struggle with prioritization of their time and nothing like a kid that helps wants you to do that better. Um, I would say, though, I think one of the hardest things for me, and this is, this is irrespective of work, is managing both home and work. I find managing the business a lot easier than managing the business and the household at the same time because yeah. at work it's clear people have position descriptions, you have KPIs, you you can develop predictable, established rhythms, whereas the household isn't like that. It's an negotiation and there's so much that's unsaid and, and, you know, that it's just a lot looser. So, you know, some of the things that I found really helpful this year, my husband and I have been navigating this um, because we went on a travelling maternity leave, which Mm -hmm. is a whole other story. But, um, you know, on Sunday nights, we have a weekly check-in with a planner for the week of things going on that week and who has what roles and responsibilities. And we even rotate chores and chore lists and, you know, we try and make it as equal as possible. But to do that when you're both leaders in companies requires flexibility. It's not like a defined gender split of you do these things, I'll do these things. It's, you know, some days... Someone has to do pickup. Some days it's e- some weeks it's easier for one person to do meal planning. Some days it's you know hardest to do others. So you know it's been. I feel like that's the harder bit. The work in progress mm-hmm. is that how do you have the household to sustain the business? And I find almost mm-hmm. the business like the release and the fun part. <laughs> I totally agree with you. <laughs> I, yeah, I go to work for a break, but I, you know, I work really, really, really hard. But for me, that's yeah, that's the stuff you know. I, I do enjoy. I like the fun part. Oh, my children too. But you know, it's just the the stuff around that that you've got to do too. Like you say, the household stuff. And I think you've brought up a really good point there around partnership and business, um, in terms of your partner playing such a big role in. You know, you being able to be successful and be who you want to be and be where, you know, go to where you want to go in your business and also be the mum you want to be. And I think there there has been some conversations in our community about not wanting to probably, I suppose, let your partner know too much because they don't understand what you're doing or they might knock you down. Whereas I think that you need to know and be really clear about where each of you are so you can actually make it work and balance it. Oh, totally. And I... I actually think financial literacy plays a huge role in that as well because I'm lucky in that my husband and I 
we both have like clear financial goals that we're working towards in 10 years time. And he can see that having your own business and what that, how that can leverage your family and your potential growth and the income that can come from that. It doesn't necessarily, it's not black and white as like, what are you taking home this week? And so he can see that supporting my career is good for our family because it's, it's a long-term play versus, you know, the, the salary day in and day out. And I think that's hard if you have a more traditional viewpoint of the world, you know, if your partner is very focused on, you know, your annual salary versus the equity that you're building in the company. And, um, and I've seen, um, founders that where their husbands are also a founder, um, that they tend to get that a lot more and therefore they have more like flexible childcare or different offsets as well. Um, but I think it's a nice place to focus because it means that the numbers do the talking rather than opinions or like, I guess all of the tricky conversations around gender and like the role of each person in the house. Yeah. No, that's right. And I also believe that, and I know I'm a better mum for being a working mum. I know that because mentally I'm getting that stimulation. I'm there. Otherwise I'm just, I'm just grumpy when I'm, I can't do like four weeks at home doing the same thing, same thing. I love my children to pieces, but I need that stimulation. And my husband's ha- happy for me to go, you know, go to work, <laughs> do what you need to do and come back, you know, and, and be that mum you want to be. And, you know, everyone's different, but I think, yes, financially on the, on the, on the same page and, and having that, that kind of bigger outlook on long term for the family and then obviously just making sure that you're happy, you're doing what you want to do. Oh, mm. totally. And I'm with you on that. I had to whip out a spreadsheet on my maternity leave because I was going a bit crazy. With the, like, it's this the stimulation, I guess. You know, there's that mental stimulation you get from work and I don't want or I don't want to have the expectation that my children should give me that stimulation yeah. that I get from somewhere else. And I think it's good that we're in a place in the world now that we can talk about that and that not be seen as being non-family oriented yeah. at all but actually something that contributes to being a stronger better mum absolutely absolutely so if you could give our mums who are working a day job trying to set up their business one piece of advice what would you give them mm, oh you might love it and you might hate it um <laughs> I've, I've worked with my mentor a lot on this but i i guess i found i found the biggest points of leverage for both my growth in the business and my personal enjoyment sustainability is timeouts from it. So, you know, whether it's once a quarter being able to step away for a day, not connected to Wi-Fi, and just strategically think about all of the things that you're doing yeah. and how that aligns to your goals. Like I think or well, the analogy we use is like, you know, we're like ducks and we look like we're coasting, but really it's those crazy Credit. legs. <laughs> Credit, exactly. And it's giving yourself time to look at the river that you're swimming mm. down or the path that you're swimming down because you can waste so much time. And I think also just being a busy mum, just having a day that you give to yourself it feels indulgent, but it's the best gift you can give to your yeah. kids and your husband because you come home rejuvenated. So, you know, I, I just had a solo day in um, December where I went out into the country and, you know, I, I went in the late afternoon and because I'm me, I like had an agenda and I had different sessions that I wanted to tackle different things. And but I still you know, went for runs and got a massage and, watched kangaroos in the yeah. bush and um it was a lovely blend of productive yeah. but relaxed yeah. and um yeah and some people do that through you know working with a mentor or a coach in a, in a planning session but you can make it your own and mm. it can feel like a joy but I came back from that session which I do from each similar very focused and it allowed me to eliminate things that were wasting my time or tackle problems mm. that I maybe didn't fully realize because I wasn't giving myself the space to realize them. 
Fantastic. That's brilliant. So now a, a very kind of digital focused question, mm -hmm. um, being that you're, you know, you guys are really focused on digital marketing is that uh, a lot of our mums in our community obviously are in the online world or trying to be in the online world. And um, a question actually, it's, it's almost like weekly, I get an email about this is it's almost like social media for them when they handle it themselves and trying to be on every platform is kind of causing this they need to be there, they want to be there, and it's super fun, but they almost kind of get into a burnout phase. I don't you probably heard, and it's almost like causing some sort of anxiety in them where they just, they love it, but it's their husbands are like, get off the phone, you know, <laughs> just stop using, you know, you need to have that break. But is there some sort of advice you can give, you know, once again, one piece of advice you can give someone who is just constantly on social media for business um, just to make them more, say, look at it more productively? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have the same thing with our team because you know, we do social media or yeah. manage digital accounts. <laughs> and simple practical things like setting rules for yourself. Um, my husband and I, we set, you know, a, a no social internet after 6 p.m. rule mm -hmm. just so that we are able to connect with one another. Um, we said that before we had a child actually yeah. just because we both worked in digital marketing and it's just easy to get lost in that world. So, and if that doesn't work, you know, at least a one hour before bed, you know, so yeah. that you're able to wind down. Um, I think from a practical business point of view, you checking at those intervals has no positive impact on your business. Like that, that is an arbitrary um, feeling of being connected to your customers and audience. But actually, if you set a specific time to do the check-ins when your brain is working best so maybe that's first thing in the morning and you set an hour aside you're going to have a much more productive use of your time um, than it being splattered here and there it, you're going to be able to see patterns in followers communication you're going to be able to um, more productively use concentrated brain time to do responses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's obviously a little bit different if you're having to do a lot of customer service inquiries or things like that if you're an online retailer, but there's got to be a tipping point financially where you actually look at outsourcing mm -hmm. that bit. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if there's one thing I've learned, and social media is, is the biggest suck of this, is the biggest thing you can leverage as a, a business owner is your time. Yeah. So if that's being used on something that is not bringing you the greatest amount of revenue, which will likely not be social media. Social media is good for the evaluation stage of purchasing usually. So it's not necessarily going to increase awareness of your brand significantly. It's going to be the, I know about it. Should I buy it? Mm -hmm. Second step. So, mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately if there's one thing that's going to cut through is that doesn't, that won't give you the money that you're looking for or the, the results you're looking for. You're mm -hmm. wasting your time on it. Yeah. But if you need to do it, do it responsibly and set a good time to do it and do that regularly, like set up a rhythm to do that so that you freed up all of your other time to do other things, whether that's work things or whether they're family things. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Now, do you have a mantra or a motto uh, that you live by that we'd love to hear? <laughs> a mantra or motto that I live by? Um, I, I guess I have, I guess I have a way of living <laughs> is um, I don't really have a, a word behind it, but for me, it's all about, I guess, um, a truthfulness to yourself and to the world out there. You know, I, um, I had a difficult ish upbringing, um, you know, obviously we live in a privileged world, um, but my father actually was an entrepreneur that had lots of ups and downs. So we would go from, you know, um, one minute trips to Europe, the second minute homeless, mm -hmm. um, lots of stress that came with that. You, you know, you add being migrants and languages and um, just really constantly shifting circumstances. And um, I think that really taught me that the easiest way through things is the honest way and sometimes that's really hard and actually it can take more time yep. it's sometimes it's really easy to to you know not for like if you're for instance wanting to a staff member that isn't the right fit it's easier to say to make that person redundant yep. than it is to say 
this is a business problem and you're not fitting into that business problem. Or you might notice in a corporate, it's easier to put someone on special projects yeah. and have a truthful conversation about them not being the right fit. And I think for me, that's been with staff. It's been with clients. You know, we've, we have um, let down clients who want to work with us because we haven't seen that we think that they're going to be successful, mm -hmm. which looks stupid, you know, to let, to say no to money. But in the long run, that, you know, has affected our word of mouth. So people know that when they work with us, they'll get results. Awesome. And so, you know, it paid off three years down the track, but it did make sense one year down the track. So, you know, I think, you know, brutal honesty without being brutal <laughs> has, um, has really worked well. So I guess, you know, having a business called Integrity and keeping your, you know, your values yeah. true to that name has been actually quite business savvy and and also you know led to having a really good reputation and having mm -hmm. trusted relationship mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know if that fully oh, answered, that's, I guess perfect. That no, <laughs> that's perfect that's brilliant well thank you so much for being on the show with us today it's um you've got such a a warm friendly you know demeanor about you and you can see that you're a very genuine person and I, it's fabulous what you're doing and i've already kind of stalked your blogs and everything because i think it's definitely a business to watch and to follow and i'll pass your details on obviously we've got you know a mountain of mums you know trying to make their way in this space and you know you know getting lots of bits of information and we've got a, a you know a lot of mums who are actually at the outsourcing stage or just about to outsource so you know it's really good to to have connections and to connect like this where i can say you know get in touch with integrity and they feel like they know you already you know <laughs> oh, thank you very much. and you sound like you have such a beautiful community i've been looking at all of the comments and how you support and um, also like challenge each other to do better. I think it's, it's wonderful and such a, a needed space. We're so hard on each other and often we can feel so alone. So it's nice to have a, a connection point. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we, I'm sure we'll be seeing you soon.